This is an introduction to the different ways that physicists measure and analyze motion. This presentation will focus on the mathematical methods used to describe and predict motion. I will discuss how graphs of motion data give a moment-to-moment -moment description of how a body moves and how a small set of equations can be used to predict the motion of objects moving with constant velocity or acceleration. When an object is dropped and the friction on it is minimal, the position of the ball at any moment of time can be predicted using the following equation. Furthermore, as long as friction is negligible, the mass of the ball dropped has no effect on its position at any given moment of time. If a bowling ball would drop from the same window, we would get the same spacing you see here, and the ball's position at any given moment of time could be found using the very same equation. Don't worry about this equation for now because we're a long way from understanding how it was derived. But what I want you to know is that in order to der derive an equation that describes how an object moves, you need to gather distance, displacement, or velocity information in small increments of time and plot the data. The slope of the plot gives you important information about how the object moves. The study of motion is the first step to understanding how net forces change motion. The three ways to quantify the motion of an object is by measuring its speed, velocity, or acceleration. I will discuss velocity and acceleration in a later presentation in much greater depth. Let's look at some words that you already use to describe motion. Speed is the ratio of dist the distance an object moves per unit time. In the U.S., we measure speed in miles per hour. For instance, to say that a car is moving at 120 miles per hour means that if the car moved at that speed for one hour, it would travel 120 miles. And if a car traveled at the speed of 120 miles per hour, it would travel 60 miles in a half an hour. And at the same speed, it would travel 30 miles in 15 minutes. And of course, 15 miles in 7.5 minutes. What doesn't change in all these examples is the ratio of the miles traveled per hour. When we discuss motion in physics, we are always careful to include units. This picture shows the speed limit for a particular highway in Calgary. If you didn't realize the units for the speed are kilometers per hour, which is about 60 miles per hour, you would get the wrong idea about Canadian highways. As I said before, speed is the distance an object covers per unit time. In this class, we will mainly use meters per second or kilometers per hour. Average speed can be found by dividing the distance traveled by the elapsed time. A meter is about 3 feet or a yard, and a kilometer is about 0.6 miles. Time is typically measured in seconds, but it can also be measured in minutes or hours. Let's use the speed equation to solve a few problems. An object travels 5 meters in 2 seconds. Find its speed. This is pretty straightforward. Since the object traveled 5 meters in 2 seconds, the speed during this time interval is 2.5 meters per second. This is about the speed of a fast walk. These numbers should help you make some sense of the speed numbers you'll be calculating in class. Human beings are able to move at speeds between 1.5 meters per second and 12 meters per second. Let's try another problem. An object moves at a rate of 3 meters per second for 1.5 seconds. How far did the object move? You probably were able to solve the last problem in your head, but this one's a little bit trickier. We always start by writing the speed equation. We substitute the values we were given and then cross multiply and solve. We get 4.5 meters. Notice that every time I put a number in an equation, I always include a unit. Always include units when you substitute and always include units in your answer. Even though you will always be asked to solve problems using an equation, it's helpful to look at the same problem using a different approach. It creates a deeper understanding that you often don't get by using an equation. Since the object traveled a constant speed of 3 meters per second for 1.5 seconds, we know that it must have traveled 3 meters in the first second. 
At a speed of 3 meters per second, it would travel only 1.5 meters in a half a second. All totaled, the car traveled 4.5 meters, which is the same answer we got when we used the equation. An object moves at a rate of 4 meters per second over a distance of 10 meters. How long did it take it to travel that distance? This is a problem that is very difficult to do without an equation, but that's not a problem because you will have to use an equation if you wanted to get credit anyway. Step 1, write out the equation. Step 2, substitute the speed and distance traveled. You must include units when you substitute all your information. We then cross multiply and divide to isolate the unknown. The answer is 2.5 seconds. Your answer must always include units. Now let's look at this problem without the equation. The object travels 4 meters per second for 10 seconds. In 2 seconds it travels 8 meters. The last 2 meters would take only a half a second. When you total the time you get the same answer we got using the equation. Remember you'll only get credit if you solve the problems using the equation, substituting with units, and answering with units. The method we just used is a good way to check if your answer makes sense. When physicists study the motion of an object, they either measure its distance or velocity as a function of time. They turn this data into, pl into a plot in order to get a moment-to-moment -moment description of the object's motion. Here is a plot of position versus time for an object. Notice that the independent variable time is on the x-axis. Plotting motion data is so powerful because it gives us a detailed visual description of, of the motion of the object. At a glance, we can see that most of the time, the object changes its position by 5 meters every 2 seconds. At 6 seconds, the speed of the object obviously changes. The change in position between 6 and 8 seconds is less than it had been earlier in the plot. Notice that the slope of the line is smaller, and the velocity during that interval is smaller too. That's no coincidence. The slope of a distance versus time plot is exactly equal to the velocity. If the slope decreases, the velocity decreases. Between one and six seconds, the slope was constant, so we know the velocity was constant too. This was a displacement versus time data for a runner. This is what you would see when you observed his motion. Notice that after six seconds, the velocity of the runner decreases. What is the runner's speed from zero to two seconds? Since speed is the change in position divided by the change in time, we see the speed is 5 meters divided by 2 seconds, which is 2.5 meters per second. A quick calculation shows you that the speed from 2 seconds to 4 seconds is the same as the value you would get from the previous calculation. This should not be surprising because the slope didn't change. You really don't need to do the calculation to find out the speed from 4 seconds to 6 seconds. It's also 2.5 meters per second, since the slope remains the same. Let's review. Does the object travel faster or slower from 6 to 8 seconds? The object obviously was slower between 6 and 8 seconds because the speed is the ratio of the change in position to the change in time. There is a smaller change in distance during that interval. Also, the slope is equal to the velocity, and the slope decreases. Compare the speed from 6 to 8 seconds with the speed from 8 to 9 seconds. Since the slope from 6 to 8 seconds is the same as from 8 to 9 seconds, we know the speed is the same. This distance versus time plot has a different shape than the previous. One way that it's similar to the last plot is the distance from the start increases the entire time, and the object gets further and further from the starting point. When we look at the plot at two, at two second intervals, we see that the object makes greater and greater gains in distance for each successive two second interval. The velocity is not constant, but increasing. Here is the motion map for the motion shown in the plot. Since the slope increases the entire time, the velocity is changing at every moment. You have learned that speed is the distance an object travels per unit time. Physicists use the slope of a d versus t plot to find an object's speed at any moment in time. 
When the slope of a d versus t plot is constant, the velocity is also constant. If the slope of the d versus t plot is increasing, then the velocity is also increasing. This is the end of my presentation on the different ways physicists measure and describe motion.